This is my Taro Hexacopter with the Pixhawk flight controller. And in this video, I want to demonstrate the importance of separating your GPS compass from the magnetic interference of your ESCs. So originally when I set up this Hexacopter, I had my GPS and compass right here just mounted in front of the Pixhawk. Basically only a few inches from each of the ESCs and once again this is a Hexacopter so there's a lot going on with those six ESCs that close to the compass. And what I've done is design just a simple compass stand. I'm going to test it and then I'll definitely put it on Thingiverse for you guys to download. This is one piece right here and then a separate base plate so it mounts like that with the GPS and compass on top. And what I'll do is I'll run the compass moat command and we'll test the compass with it mounted directly to the frame like it is now. We'll read the interference and then we'll mount it on the stand and then compare the interference with it separated from the ESCs. Now to prepare your multi-rotor for the compass moat function, Randy McKay from 3D Robotics has a great video. Mine is already set up but if you'll notice that each one of my props is flipped over and then rotated one position to the next motor spot. So in this case, I flipped them over and rotated them clockwise. As long as you flip it over and rotate it one position, whether clockwise or counterclockwise, you'll be good. And what should happen is when all of these are rotating, it will actually be creating a downward force so your multi-rotor won't take off while you're running at half throttle. So now I'm in Mission Planner. I have my 3DR radio connected. I'm actually going to go up to the terminal screen and I'm going to select Pixhawk and then hit connect. Okay, so now we're connected. I'm going to type setup and then I'm going to type compass moat. I'll hit enter and it'll basically ask me to go to mid throttle for five seconds, then bring my throttle back down and then we'll see the results. Now keep in mind when you're in compass mo mode, your multi-rotor is armed and ready to go. We're going to go up to 50% for five seconds and come back down. Now let's go take a look at the data. You can see our readings. Now I'm going to hit enter. And looking at the data, it says interference at full throttle is 68% of magnetic field. Now that is a lot higher than I had expected. So what that means is doing any sort of loiter or auto, you're going to get toilet bowling and it's just really going to throw the compass off. You can see we have the 3D printed stand mounted with the compass on top. We've raised it off of the frame about four and a half inches. So here we'll go for five seconds at mid throttle and then we'll come back down. Okay, now check this out. It says interference at full throttle is 4% of magnetic field. So pretty compelling results just raising that compass about four and a half inches. And if you look at the APM copter wiki, you can see that it says if it's less than 30%, then your compass interference is acceptable and you should see good loiter. 31 to 60, then you're in the gray area, and then above 60, you should definitely separate your compass from your ESCs. So I'd say I feel pretty good about uh, where I am with separating that with this 3D printed compass stand. There's a link to download this below on Thingiverse. Remember, you can always download and get it printed from someone else through Make XYZ. Once again, there's just this one piece base plate and then this other piece, the stand that actually has the mount for your compass. And I just secured both ends with some really sticky 3M double-sided adhesive tape. So just wanted to share that for those of you that may have a need to distance the compass away from the rest of your frame. Now I'm looking forward to doing some loiter and auto tests and I'll definitely be sharing those in the coming days. But in the meantime, I hope you guys found this useful and until next time, thanks for watching.